Um, so I'm, as she said, I'm Cody Buchanan. I'm a community partnership specialist at the Department of Education in the Dropout Prevention Unit. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my main responsibility is um, helping oversee a grant program that funds after school programs and summer programs across the state, including a number of the programs that we have summer associates placed in um, this summer. So. Uh, as well, I am the content specialist for our dropout prevention unit in the area of service learning and positive youth development. So this morning I'm going to talk a little bit about service learning um, as it pertains to K-12 specifically. Um, and as uh, this program is really a partnership between Campus Compact and the Colorado Service Learning Council, I'm going to be using a lot of the materials that the Colorado Service Learning Council has developed and used um, over the years. So one of the things that I really want to get across is that um, service learning is a, a huge topic. It looks very different to um, pretty much anyone that you talk to. Um, one of the, the major, obviously uh, you guys are doing service learning this summer as a part of your um, VISTA experience. Um, I'm gonna be talking more about facilitating service learning uh, projects and developing service learning projects uh, for the youth that you guys are working with, knowing that not all of you are working with youth, um, but hopefully this gives you some common language and common understanding about what service learning looks like as a, as a pedagogy. Um, so this is the definition that the Colorado Service Learning Council has decided upon. It's uh, a teaching and learning strategy that integrates meaningful service with youth leadership, academic instruction, and intentional reflection. So those are the three really key pieces. And I'm gonna hone in on each of those individually um, in just a moment. Uh, but that enrich the learning experience, teach civic and personal responsibility, and strengthen communities. So really looking at the kind of uh, triple threat of service learning, uh, it really supports academic learning it really supports character development, skill building, 21st century learning skills, uh, and it also strengthens and gives back to community. And, and that's community however you define it, whether it's the school community that you work with, perhaps the classroom community that you're uh, facilitating, or the greater community um, that, you, that houses you that, that you're a part of. Um, one thing I just want to point out is that there's a pretty significant difference in definitions of what service learning looks like uh, for K-12 students and higher ed students. So uh, how many of you participated in some form of service learning uh, during college? Anybody? Cool, so um, I'm sure you'll know that in higher ed, service learning really focuses on reciprocal community partnerships. Um, Kara could talk extensively about that piece, but um, really today focusing in on the uh, K-12 definition of service learning, which really looks at the infused academics and the youth leadership as the major, major components. So as I said, uh, service learning has these three components, uh, youth-led, infused academics, and intentional reflection. And one of the really important factors for high quality service learning is good facilitation. So in your role, you may be asked to facilitate service learning. That was something that we've talked about with the host sites and encourage them to take advantage of you guys to help promote service learning activities for their students. And so um, we're gonna walk through some strategies for um, kind of infusing all of these into the service learning experiences that you're providing with the students. Um, so, Again, skilled facilitation is essential to a positive service learning experience. Uh, really, every step of the way, there are opportunities for you as a facilitator to um, enhance the experience that the young person is having. So, youth leadership uh, is, is a big one here. Um, what we want to do is give as much of the ownership of a service learning experience to the young people as possible. And I love this analogy of uh, the bumpers on a bowling lane. So if you think about uh, bowling with, with the bumpers up, 
Uh, we really want you as a facilitator to act like the bumpers on a bowling lane. So you're really kind of pro providing the parameters uh, for the young person to work within, kind of ensuring that they don't fall off into the gutters. Um, but within that, uh, you're giving them the freedom to knock down as many pins as they can. And it's not up to you to ensure the success of the project. I think you, you want to set the students up for success, but ultimately, fidelity to the, the model and helping them through providing uh, leadership roles, uh, providing academic enrichment, good reflection, that's going to develop their skills, whether or not you s uh, achieve the goals that you set out to achieve when the project uh, gets started. Uh, infusing academics is also very, very important. And those of you that um, are in, uh, I know Adams 12, our Summer Scholar, some, uh, Scholars Unlimited folks, uh, you guys are in organizations that have a heavy focus on academic learning. And so you'll be looking for opportunities throughout to infuse academics. I'm gonna walk through the uh, five stages of service learning here in a, a minute, and we'll talk about some strategies for what that can look like. Um, but really, you just wanna be very intentional about uh, infusing academics wherever you can in, in a service learning project. And lastly is reflection. So we want guided reflection um, at each stage of the process from the moment that you introduce yourself and each other till the very final wrap up. Uh, you're taking every opportunity that you can to help the students reflect. One, it is a great skill for them to practice and learn. So that's a big part of service learning is giving them the uh, space to practice these new skills that are going to be very essential to them as they continue to grow. So teamwork and leadership, um, communication, public speaking, and, and reflection is definitely a big part of that as well. So the five stages of service learning um, are here, and I'm going to walk through each of them together. But this is adapted from material from Catherine Berger Kay, who's really seen as a national expert on service learning. Um, and she's kind of developed this model for um, moving through a service learning process as a facilitator. So again, we'll hone in on each of these individually. But it's really important that you think about what this could look like in the service learning um, that you're going to end up doing at your site. So let's start with investigation. So when we talk about the investigation, what, what we're talking about is really a two-fold investigation. What you're doing is you're looking at the community needs and the uh, interests and passions and abilities of the students that you're serving. Where those two things intersect, that's the sweet spot for the project that you um, hopefully will be undertaking. So again, ultimately the students will be deciding a lot of this stuff um, because you're turning over as much of the leadership to them as possible. But um, so the investigation is also a really good place to start thinking about um, developing skills, infusing academics, what research needs to happen, um, what, who do we need to talk to, who are the key decision makers, what are the parameters that we're working under, maybe there's geographic limitations to what kinds of projects that you can do at your site, um, maybe your host site has access to a uh, minibus or some other form of transportation that, that runs that, but really, again, that's the, the bumper's idea is um, you as a facilitator are really, it's very important that you are very clear from the beginning on the parameters because what you don't want to do in the project is, is um, be taking steps backwards. So um, also identifying what resources are available. So maybe it's talking to the students about um, what their family members do, what, where their uh, parents work. Maybe, you know, if you've got uh, a student who's 
parent is uh, a librarian, maybe there's some resources through the library. Obviously, there's libraries in every community, so whether you have a parent there or not. Um, but really just being very intentional about uh, working with the students to identify the resources at their disposal before you start a project. This last one here is defining a problem and setting a goal. That's really articulating what the project is. And that's the end of the investigation process. So once you have really thoroughly kind of vetted all of the um, community needs, the student interests, you've turned it over to them to decide what the specific problem that they want to address and how they want to address it. Once that's been decided, you want to write it down, make sure that it's uh, agreed upon by everybody, and that we're all working with a common set of goals. Uh, that moves us into planning and preparation. So again, the research is really key for um, infusion of academics. I think you want to think about multimedia research, whether it's um, newspaper articles or um, you know, surfing the web, watching news reports to identify community needs. That's really important. Obviously, talking to community members is a big part of it, and there's a lot of skill building that can happen in preparing young people to talk to community members, right? So just think about all of the um, details here, you know, transportation, weather contingencies, uh, food, snacks. Um, there's obviously the more that you can think about in detail going forward, then one, you're allowing the young people to, you're, you're utilizing them to help you think through some of this. And um, it's awesome uh, roles to give young people is to think about what snacks will, how many people will be there, what food will we need, how much um, will it cost, working from a budget. Um, these are all great places to infuse academics. Um, so once you've really had your plan, then you carry it out, and that's the action stage. Um, maybe that's presenting at the school board. Maybe you've organized a park cleanup, and this is the actual day that you've rallied the community to come uh, clean up the park. Um, one of our sites, uh, Adams 12, who's working at Adams 12 here? So they do a lot of really cool service learning, and one of the projects they did, I think, two years ago was work to eliminate um, plastic water bottles from the school and tried to get everyone to use um, sustainable kind of now jeans or, or whatever and they were able to solicit donations and get kind of plastic big plastic water bottles for every, refillable water bottles for everyone to use they talked to the principal about getting um, a drinking fountain that has one of the water bottle fillers on it and they got plastic water bottles removed from the vending machine that they had in the school. So um, ultimately they did this by making a presentation to the school board about their project to get support and that was their kind of uh, action day. So inviting stakeholders and making sure that the work is public is really important as well. We want young people to feel good about their service. Uh, we want them to kind of get the credit that they deserve for, for their hard work. Also kind of demonstrating, and we're gonna move into demonstration, um, which is at the end, but demonstrating their learning to their teachers and, and their family members is a real source of pride for young people, and we wanna give them that opportunity wherever we can. As a facilitator, you'll wanna document everything that's taking pictures, it's um, keeping copies of the, the planning and the brainstorms. And one of the really awesome parts of a demonstration, which is the last of these five elements, is um, kind of showing off all of the stages of the process. Young people love it, uh, participants and stakeholders love it, parents love it. So just be really intentional about documenting the process all the way through. And obviously we wanna make it fun. Um, throughout the process, service learning is a really awesome opportunity to develop these skills in a real world setting that's much more engaging than, than the setting you guys are in right now, stuck here in your chairs listening to me talk, right? So 
Um, the more opportunities you have to make it fun, the better, the more committed your students will be, and the easier the whole process will go. So reflection is a big one as well. Like reflection, um, it's its own piece here in stage four uh, as a kind of look back at what we would have done differently. It's almost like the scientific design process where you um, make a plan, you do your experiment, then you uh, reflect and figure out what went wrong and why and what you would do differently next time. So this is, um, at this stage, is where you have a nice big formal reflection on um, the whole process. But really, it's a continuous process. So at the end of every day, maybe you take five minutes and you check in with everybody about how their day went. How are they feeling about their particular role? What did they feel went well that day? What didn't go well and what ideas do they have to, to fix it? One that's awesome at helping them see themselves as leaders, demonstrating that you care what they think and that you're willing to incorporate their uh, feedback and concerns into how you plan going forward. That encourages buy-in. Um, but it also helps them to practice those reflection skills, which are really, really important, as we all know, to develop um, as we move into adulthood. So that's what we talk about, um, facilitated versus informal. Um, a you could sit down and have a planned reflection activity, or it may be pulling a kid out into the hall and saying, hey, I, I noticed you weren't as engaged today. Let's talk a little bit about how you feel about the project. Um, are there shifts that we can make to make this uh, a more enjoyable experience for you? And, and so kind of the same with individual versus collective, making sure that you're giving the space for people to reflect individually. Uh, journaling is really, really awesome as it uh, relates to service learning, asking the young people to keep a journal of their experience. Maybe at the end of every day, you give them 10 minutes to just jot down how they felt about the day, what went well, what didn't, um, what are they excited about, um, what progress have they made towards their portion of the roles and responsibilities. And ultimately, uh, all of this reflection helps to anchor these new skills. So if you've given someone a leadership opportunity and, and they've stepped up and done that, then let's reflect on that with them. Let's say, hey, you did great today. We love, the op we love that you stepped up and were a leader in these ways, and it really helps them connect with that experience and, and is more likely to, again, anchor that um, for them as, as they move forward. The last is demonstration. So, um, again, giving and taking credit. So making sure that you as a facilitator is, are, are giving credit to the students where it's deserved and encouraging the students to take credit publicly. So. Um, kind of informing the community about the impacts of, of your project, uh, whether it's, you know, getting it into a school newsletter or on the website of the organization that you're at. Um, there's a lot of really good ways to inform the public about the good work of the students, but that's, I can't uh, overstate the importance of allowing the students to take credit for their work Again, that really um, encourages a commitment to service. It helps them to feel like um, they're making a difference in their community, which will encourage them to continue giving back. Uh, and they, can, they should feel proud for the, the work that they're doing and the things that they're learning. Um, you know, it sometimes can be hard to get students excited about learning in a classroom, whether it's, you know, math or reading and writing, um, it's just dry and, and you know how that works, I'm sure, um, all being recent or current students. But uh, in, in the, when you're learning out in the field and you're learning these skills uh, in real world settings, it can be really fun and exciting and we want to um, help them connect with that learning uh, through reflection and demonstration. Um, again, it's the journey, not the destination, so we're not from, from step one, we're not tying our success to the end goal of the project, right? So if you 
had hoped to build a sustainable um, park cleanup group that never ends up getting formed, that doesn't mean it wasn't a successful project. And so it's really up to you as a facilitator to help the young people understand that success or failure is in the process and not the outcome. Moves more towards academic standards and um, kind of standardized tests, there is a tendency for some of the more engaging aspects of school climate and culture to be pushed to the wayside. And what we really want to do on the Service Learning Council and in our dropout prevention unit at CDE is keep challenging educators and uh, people like yourselves who will be working with young people uh, to think about how you make learning engaging. Um, these, this was a, a study from 2006, I know it's a little old, but when what really catches me is that kind of the top three responses on what would make a dropout more likely or how schools can improve according to dropouts, really the top three in particular are really served by service learning. Uh, but opportunities for real world learning and um, keeping classes interesting, I think those are really well suited to um, a service learning experience. Now I know I moved through a lot of this stuff fast today. Um, we have printouts of the slides that um, you all will receive, but what I wanted to do was give you at least some common language around service learning that will be really helpful as you use these resources. Um, our service learning this is how you would get in touch with us at the Service Learning Council, and we have some great resources there as well. But the National Service Learning Clearinghouse is this awesome kind of searchable database where you can uh, specify the age group of students that you're working with, kind of the subject matter that you um, are looking to engage with. Uh, there's some other, maybe the size of your group. And then it'll show you a whole list of project ideas and completed projects um, from all over the country. Uh, and most of them fall within this Katherine Berger K model of, of um, investigation, planning, action, reflection, demonstration. Uh, so hopefully um, I've given you enough understanding to navigate uh, the resources that are out there. Um, this is a really cool webinar series. So if you have time or um, would like to kind of continue diving in on how to be a really effective facilitator of service learning, I'd suggest the webinar series. And then I just, this U for Youth is the federal um, after school program database. So as I mentioned, the um, I work for uh, the 21st Century Community Learning Centers. That's the only federal funding stream for after school programs. So when you hear that Donald Trump cut after school programs out of the budget, what they're talking about is the 21st Century Community Learning Centers. Uh, it's a $2 million or $2 billion a year budget and it serves a little more than 2 million kids a year, including about 20,000 in the state of Colorado. And um, the government has put a ton of resources into um, this Youth for Youth platform, which is kind of a searchable, very similar to the Clearinghouse, but without uh, a sole focus on service learning. A ton of different uh, trainings on everything from behavior management to um, different after school program ideas to infusing academics. So these will all be valuable resources uh, as you become skilled facilitators.